some of my favorite models. So I've built these up myself. One of the biggest problems is keeping the dust off them. Uh, it's really hard to keep them clean. So this is my one of my favorite all-time cars. Nissan 300 ZX twin turbo. Oh my gosh. So I fell in love with these cars and I've had a silver uh, 1990 uh, 300 ZX NA uh, with black leather. Then I had a silver 1991. 300ZX twin turbo stock standard uh, with the uh, front and uh, with the rear steering system and everything just a beautiful car uh, black leather uh, interior and uh, then I had a red one just like this uh, 1991 300ZX but it was an NA and it was such a beautiful car, black leather upholstery. I sold it at about 120 Ks and I struggled to get 3,000 New Zealand dollars for it. And that was only about five years ago. And now they're selling for well up in the teens. Man, I really got suckered on that. They really appreciated the value. And should they say they should, they're a damn good car, well engineered and beautiful to drive. Uh, just put the hood back on. Just close in there like that. There we go. Sitting reasonably well. Got the stock standard wheels. I had uh, only the stock standard wheels on mine, and I've got quite a few uh, images and PowerPoints of my uh, ownership of 300 ZXs. Okay, this one here, white one, I haven't painted this one yet. Haven't got around to it. I might not actually. I quite like it in white. It's got a transparent hood, so you can see the engine through here. Just a classic intake system. They just look really nice. In fact, it's a shame to actually shut the hood on them because the engine is a piece of art. Cam belt, quad cam, variable valve timing. Uh, the twin turbo is about 300 horsepower for a 3 litre V6, which is really up there with today's power for 1990. It was, I believe, a supercar of the time. Certainly a Japanese supercar anyway, and affordable. So the first one I bought, the silver one, I think I paid $2,000 for it, New Zealand done about 180 k's and I changed the cam belt because it had no history. The twin turbo, I think I paid 2000 maybe 2300 2400 dollars for that one. I blew the turbos up and sold it for about $1500. I should have fixed it actually. And then the red one, I think I paid 2500 and sold it for about 3000. So I I got a couple of dollars back on that. But I actually um, ground off the um, splines out of the um, torque converter uh, where the input shaft goes into the torque converter for some reason the, the splines all chewed out and the car just wouldn't move so I pulled the gearbox out and saw that the torque converter was screwed out took it into a gearbox company and they reconditioned the torque converter for me I reassembled everything and uh, she was as good as gold again okay now this is the predecessor just the 300Z. This one here is a turbocharged one, I think, from memory. These were quite a sharp car in their day. Flip up headlights. And these were these were going really cheap, but now they're quite um, quite collectible. Uh, I'm talking here about in the real in the real um, size, full size car. Um, they didn't perform too bad, I have driven them. And some of them come with the target tops as well. Quite often they have like red velour upholstery and things like that on them. They were a nice car. Uh, but now they've gone to crazy prices. If you can get one without any rust in it. They rusted badly around the hatches and 
around the back quarters they just rusted out quite badly I think around the roof and they rusted quite badly in a lot of places whereas these models here are pretty darn good for rust they they hang together well they're well built body nicely built body good strong car a wide body built I believe more for the American market they're quite a large sports car comfortable inside and a um, mine was a 2 plus 2 these are just 2's so I had the rear seat in the back of mine which was quite nice and they're all Japanese imports here in New Zealand okay but uh, now there's not so many around because a lot of them got um, you know blown up and crashed and written off etc so I think that's helped the price to appreciate okay one of my also favorite cars Toyota Supra haven't actually owned one of these came pretty close to it a couple of times should have but then they're down around about three four five thousand dollars New Zealand you won't get them now for much under twenty thousand for a rough one um even for an na three liter straight six twin overhead cam these are all fuel injected cars of course this is just one of the standard wheels on it standard wing on the back still a nice looking car got a nice sort of a curvy shape to it not too big not too small plenty of punch twin turbo version of these are absolutely vicious yeah they're fast and they they command good money fifty thousand dollars no trouble at all for a good one okay this one here is a made up model all these ones here are ones i've actually built myself okay they just need a good dust okay this one here is one i brought just happened to see it in a toy shop actually i thought man i've got to have this about twenty dollars i think so it's a good price and it's a little bit modified uh, it's just a two twin seater um, 300 ZX that's how the hatches look on the window lift up this one's full of sound systems the actual um, dash on these are really cool the way they slope down to you sort of slope forward or so I should say they sort of slope out towards you on, on, on quite a slant they're really sharp looking car you got to think well this is like 30 years ago so these are pretty darn nice cars at the time I can remember when I was quite young seeing a brand new 300 ZX in New Plymouth in, uh, in, in New Plymouth Nissan I think it might have been called Datsun in those days and it was like going for close to a hundred thousand dollars certainly well above 50 it's between 50 and a hundred thousand dollars I presume well out of the average person's um, you know ability to buy one that was absolute fantastic thing to see to, to actually be able to own one later on in life was just absolute joy anyway I have owned this model and I did have a black one so I had a couple of these I had an 86 which was the 2 litre twin turbo a white one and then I had the 89 which is this one here with a little nose cone in the front there a little bit of a refine to the built in sort of spoiler into the boot lid mine had the digital dashboard and it was black um, with a sort of a pearl red through it absolutely beautiful car standard mags on it these actually are the standard mags but they're being painted mine was still still silver still aluminium and i had the target top that went right across the top on this one the lift out roof single turbo turbo charger single turbo i think i paid about eighteen hundred dollars for it had a blown head gasket so I fixed all that up myself learned a bit about it sold it all I could get for it was about two nine three thousand dollars for it oh man I regret selling that car it was so so fast so fast now these things are actually worth a lot of money now well in the 30s here in New Zealand okay and a classic Mustang never owned one but always loved looking at them this is a made up model I actually built this one here of course this one here is a made up model beautiful model actually real detail on the engine could almost forgive it for being a real car open uh, with a hood and open doors and uh, the detail inside is absolutely superb lovely car lovely car okay this was my second Supra that I had they called a Celica Supra in those days 
uh, what was it? About a 1982, I think it might have been. And it was a 2.8 straight six. Um, not too bad charged. Mine was an NA. 2.8 litre straight six double over cam. Pretty much the same engine that came out in the Crescida. Uh, five four speed auto. Really nice car. It had um, pneumatic seats. You had a little pump. You could pump up the seat pressures and the lumbar support and things like that. Really, really nice car. These are actually the wheels that I had on my one. These are the standard wheels that came out with. You just don't see this on a road anymore. A lot of them rusted out. But they were the first of the real punchy Japanese Toyotas. These things absolutely ripped. They were fantastic. Now, I had the model before this as well. I had a Celica Supra 80... 79, so 7980 Japanese import had a 2. Point, I think it had a 2.6 litre straight six single overhead cam. It was when Japanese imports were just coming into the country. I think I paid about $12,000 for it. It was quite a lot of money at the time, but they were quite a big deal at the time. I haven't seen any models of those ones. When I do see one, I'll buy one and make one up. It was a really nice car, it was white. Had a sunroof, had red velour through it. But that led me into my joy of supers. So I had the white one, I had one of these silver ones like this with the black contrast. Then I had a white one and a black one of these. And then I was intending to go to this model, but I ran into the Nissan 300 ZXs and I got hooked on those cars. I just love the 300 ZX more than I like the Toyota Supras actually. Now I never had one of these. Uh, Z cars either. They were cheap at the time. I can remember these going for about you know fifteen hundred dollars, thousand dollars. They were two point eight straight six single overhead cam. Um, they rusted really badly around the top of the guards here, around the roof, around the back section. And they this was the two eighty Z, and uh, before that was the two sixty Z and the two forty Z. When I was doing my apprenticeship back in the 70s, I remember brand new 240Zs on the road, lovely orange ones. Now they're selling for well over 100,000 New Zealand dollars now. And I think brand new, they might have been about 4,000 or three to 4,000 dollars new. So yeah, <laughs> it's crazy how things have gone. If you just had some idea of where the prices were going, even if you borrowed up the 100% of all of the money, uh, you know, and put it in a barn somewhere, preserved it, it would certainly be a pretty good investment long term. So there you go, it's a little selection of some of my car models. Haven't made any up for a little while. I do have some others stacked away as well, but these were my favourite ones, so I just had them here in my office on the windowsill, uh, gathering dust and uh, <laughs> I actually, this might motivate me actually to get them cleaned. One way I do clean them is just to get some soapy water in, in the sink and just give them a little bit of a slosh around the soapy water and then just let them drip dry. And they normally come up really nice. Okay, well hopefully um, these have brought back some memories for some of you of the, uh, the real life versions. And... Uh, and it's been a joy to share them with you. Catch you a little bit later on.